Hello! I've been asked to make a video on how to make lay boxes for crested gecko and gargoyle gecko eggs. So, you can get a typical Tupperware container from Walmart or wherever. And this is an old one. This has, you know, used dirt in it. Um, and it's kind of dirty, so I'm going to replace it with some fresh stuff. What I use is Zoomed Eco Earth. It's all natural, eco friendly, la di da da da, and it also breaks down all the poop and other junk that might get in there if it's the skin that shed off and stuff. And so it's good for live vivariums too. So it comes in a brick like this. This is two bricks, there's three usually. And it expands up to eight times its size or something like that. So here's one that I've been working on. Like five minutes ago I put it in this container with three bottles of water. Three of these full of water and it has now soaked up all the water and grown huge. So I'm going to try to break it apart. But I think it'll still be, yeah, it's still solid on the inside. Oh crap. <sighs> anyway, so you break it apart. Oh, making more mess. Goodness. All right, can you see the lighter color inside? That's, oh, there we go. This is all dry still and hard, so we need to add more water to that and let it soak a bit more. This stuff soaks up water like crazy. Such a sponge. There we go. That worked. Come on. So basically, you have to be willing to get dirty and get your floor dirty if you're not careful, which I clearly am not. All right. Well, there's still a few pieces that need to be softened, but I'll skip that part for now. So then what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that when you squeeze it, there's no excess water coming out. So see that stuff dripping out? You want to get it all out. Because you don't want it too moist or else the eggs will drown. There we go. Alright, so it's still really warm and moist. I used warm water. Hot water, actually. Alright. Then you take these containers and fill them up. Let's dump out this one first. Goodbye! Alright. So squeeze the water out. It's hard to do with one hand. Put it in the bin. Alright, you're going to fill it a few inches deep. Alright, enough that the gecko can dig down and feel like they have a secure enough hole to lay their eggs in and sufficiently bury them back up because they do cover them back up with dirt. Often so well that you can't even tell they were digging. Generally you'll notice that they're going to be laying eggs because you'll see them hanging around their lay box. You'll see digging, you'll see holes in it um, from them playing around. You'll sometimes see them in there covered in dirt. Sometimes all you can see is the tip of their tail. They're completely buried under depending on how big your lay box is. Alright. But when they lay actual eggs they usually, I don't know, cover it up pretty pretty well. Alright, it's going to take a while so. You want to make sure that the soil or the eco-earth is um, loose 
inside the container. If it's too compact, then the gecko will have trouble digging. So make sure it's nice and loose. And I usually, usually shake it flat so that I can tell if there's been some digging action going on. All right, let's go give it to a gecko. Good. Now she's thinking about it already. Oh yeah, she's excited. Okay, here are the rest of my lay boxes done. Once again, I made a huge mess. Oh well. All right, so they're pretty full. So this gives the gecko room to dig down, lay eggs down in the middle or the bottom and cover them back up. So I found another lay box in one of the, um, what's it called, exoterras uh, that I hadn't emptied yet and it happens to have eggs in it. Now unfortunately this eco earth is pretty dry, it's still a little damp but we should have it a little more moist than this, so not too sure if these eggs will make it through. But we will get them into the incubation medium ASAP and hope that they survive. They're nice and white, good size and shape. So what we do, under here we have our incubator. It's a slow season this season. We This time last year we had about 30 eggs. But we didn't really do much breeding this year because we'll be moving um, in a few months and we don't want to really try to move a whole bunch of eggs and new hatchlings. But as you can see we write on them the name of the mother and the date they were found, okay? Or approximate date in some cases. So this stuff here is aquatic pond soil. You can also get it commercially. I think it's called Hatch Right. All right, you keep it moist, but not too wet. You don't want to drown the eggs. They're soft-shelled eggs, and the babies inside can actually drown if it's too wet. All right, place the eggs into the holes. You want to make sure you don't turn the eggs too much, because depending how long they've been there, the embryos could be growing and we don't want them to drown if we turn them upside down or roll them over. Oh, sorry, I'm not very good at filming. Alright, you want to cover it around the edges. Alright, so it can stay moist. Okay, so you can write on it with just a normal Sharpie. It doesn't affect the baby. So I've written M for Marigold, May 6th. It's kind of exciting because we think this first egg from Marigold, which I don't know when it was laid, unfortunately, um, was leftover sperm. They retain sperm. This is crested geckos. Uh, they retain sperm. And so we think this is from Dijon, who we had a breeding with last season. Hopefully, these new eggs are with her second boyfriend, Shrapnel. He's a gorgeous guy that we uh, hatched out last year. Make sure you keep a lid on this to keep the moisture in. We do have a few holes in there so that it doesn't get too moist or else they'll go moldy and die. All right. Again, this is just another Tupperware container. Exciting! 